Hey everyone, today I thought I'd share with you what textbooks I'm using for my first semester of occupational therapy school. So these are the required textbooks that are required by my school. Um, I am missing one book because it's an ebook and it's a healthcare handbook, but the rest of the books I got in their print format, I just prefer that method. Um, now these are just the required textbooks. I did not get any of the recommended textbooks. I figure if I need those recommended textbooks, then I'll go ahead and purchase them at that time. But according to the syllabus, I think we have access to any readings that we need out of those recommended books off of Blackboard. Um, so I probably won't be purchasing them. So the first book that we have is this textbook right here. Um, this is for our toolbox course, which I think I mentioned maybe in last week or a previous week, is a course that I'm really excited about. It's where we're actually learning a lot of really practical skills when it comes to occupational therapy. We've only had to read one chapter out of this book and it had to do with um, soap, notes, soap notes and documentation. So I'm not sure what the rest of this book has, but this book is huge. It's really, really thick. Um, I'm hoping, I haven't really looked thoroughly at how much of this book we're reading in the syllabus. Um, according to the syllabus, but this is a really big book. <laughs> now we also have um, this soap notes um, manual and we have already used, it's only the second week and we've already read I think eight chapters of this, um, which is quite a lot. This is a very detailed book and I think it's been really useful um, and it kind of goes through how to write soap notes, what information is supposed to be in each section of the, the soap notes, and um, so this is just for learning how to document um, initial evaluations and different documentation when you're working with clients. And this book so far has actually been really helpful. It has a lot of really good examples. Um, it kind of goes through step by step and shows you here's one way you could do it, but here's a better way you could write this. Um, and it's really thorough about what information needs to go where when you're documenting. I would recommend going ahead and getting the current version of the Soap Notes book. I heard from a second year that she had tried to save money and bought an older edition and she ended up having to go back and buy the newer edition. I'm not sure what the reasoning was there for why she needed the newer version, but it, you know, you might as well just go ahead and get the current updated version, um, at least of this book. Of the other books, from what I understand and what I've heard from the second years in my program, is that it's not as important to get the most current edition. Um, the only book that they said get the current edition was this book right here, which is the Soap Notes Manual. Here is another really huge book that we have. If you look at it, I think it's even bigger than the other Pedretti's book. Um, this is for my evidence-based practice course. Now, I'm not really sure um, when we're going to read this or how this plays in or if we are just need it for another semester, how that works because so far, we haven't used this book at all. Now, the, my evidence-based practice course is the course where we're learning how to um, run statistics um, and how to read different statistics, basically how to go through the data of any research that's been completed. Um, it, we're also kind of going through articles and reading them and analyzing them, seeing how like kind of determining if we think that it's an article that we should look for further research or if we should implement some technique based on the article. So that's what that course is for. And this is the, one of the books that we're using for this for that course. Um, I'm not actually sure how much we'll be using this realistically. I don't think we're going to be using it that much I, from what I remember in the syllabus, so I'm not 100% sure. Here is another one of my textbooks. This is another one that we have not used yet. Um, it's Occupational Therapy for Performance, Participation, and Well-Being. So this one I think is for my theory course, which is a course that we're basically going over a lot of the history behind um, occupational therapy and the different mindset and thinkings um, that have occurred throughout the history of occupational therapy and that are um, still currently in use. And so this, I think, is the textbook we'll be using for that class. So far, we haven't used it at all. I'm thinking it's something we might go through later in the semester. Um, but this is also another really thick book. I feel like a lot of our books are really, really, um, have a lot of information on a lot of pages. And I think this probably makes sense because we have so much reading in my program. I think like we wrote up how much reading, how many readings we had for just this weekend and it was like I want to say 10 or more readings. So that includes articles, chapters of textbooks, 
um, and any anything really that a professor might have pulled out and asked us to read was included in that like counting. Um, so it's been a lot, a lot of reading and so I feel like we'll probably get through a lot of these books and a lot of chapters in these books just because of the sheer amount of reading that we've been doing already up to this point. So this is the textbook for my communications class. We've already gone through um, the first two or three chapters and we're definitely going to be reading the majority of this book. This is the intentional relationship. Um, I'll put all the books listed down below. I'll provide more information but this book is basically um, what we're going to be using in our communications class, it's a really easy read. It doesn't take a lot of time. It's not very dense and complicated. So those were all the textbooks that we're using in my first semester of occupational therapy school. I mentioned that there was one that I did not actually mention um, or show you, I guess, and that was the health care handbook, and that's because that's an online book that's only 7 or $8, I think, through Amazon. So those are the books that we're going to be reading. The only other thing that I really wanted to mention in this video is that I bought a planner um, and I feel like this is a really really essential purchase when you're going through occupational therapy school. Um, I didn't I just got this planner uh, I want to say the middle of last week and the reason I got it is because we've had so many readings and so many homeworks and just so many things coming at us different um, scheduled meetings or volunteer opportunities just various homeworks and it gets very very overwhelming so for me and I think the majority of my class we've run out and bought planners just to kind of keep everything in line so I would definitely recommend it re recommend that if you're interested in going into occupational therapy school that at some point probably preferably before you start occupational therapy school because I really wish I had would have had this in the beginning it kind of sucked going back and catching up um, is to get a planner so this is the one I got um, I just got it at Target and nothing fancy, just I can jot down what different homeworks we have or volunteer opportunities or really anything that I want to keep in mind I can put in the planner. So that's all. I hope you're having a great day. Bye.